Wow, how was CJI and ADCC? What an amazing weekend. Let's talk about it. Guys, my name is Bill Jones. I'm the head instructor of Top Level Martial Arts in beautiful downtown Cuyahoga Falls. I'm Black Belt under Master Pedro Sauer and Tony Rinaldi. You're watching Professor's Corner. Like, subscribe, do all the things. I'd love to hear from you. Um, CJI, Craig Jones Invitational and ADCC, Abu Dhabi Combat Club World Championship were both on this weekend. I did a video a, a while back um, kind of giving my initial just gut reaction and my thoughts about CJI. Um, I, I'm going to say that overall, I think, like, before we even go any further, like, I'm going to some positives, some negatives for both of these things. I'm going to say overall, I think CJI was a very positive event. Um, you, you know, like, and I, I honestly think ADCC was as well. Um, I think they were both very positive events. The the biggest negative I have for both of them is that they happened on the same weekend. I wish Craig had done it a little differently than that. Um, because I think that he, while he was trying to make a statement, which, which he definitely made, let's be real clear. He made a statement, um, and it's an important statement, but I think there were better ways to do that than to put your friends in a situation where they have to decide whether or not they want to compete in the most prestigious event in the history of jujitsu uh, with ADCC, or they want to help you build up your new event. And, um, y you know, like, of course, there's money on the line and everything, so they chose that. But o overall, they, they didn't get a chance to, to be in the prestige of ADCC. Um, so... That's that's the one big negative I'll say about the CJI. And other than that, I only have one other kind of negative thing. But let me talk about some of the really positive stuff from that. I thought the alley, the, the slanted walls, was phenomenal. One of my f things that I hate about jiu-jitsu tournaments, and I absolutely hate them, is that the, the, the boundaries are seemingly meaningless. And this is like... Every tournament from like your local Fuji or Naga or or grappling industries all the way up to ADCC, like you're grappling out of the ring half the time. You don't know when to stop. You know, if you let up a little early, you, you know, because the ref didn't say stop yet, but you're like on concrete, like you might get hit with a submission and just randomly lose. Like there is no other sport on earth that doesn't pay attention to its own boundaries. Like I don't understand why the hell anybody gets away with it but they do and i really liked the way the alley it, the boundaries are very clear and the few times that people did post on the top of it it was immediately stopped and reset to neutral i liked that um i liked the way that it's a little easier to, to use the sides than if it was just a cage um so overall i I, th I think craig jones made a really smart move there and i understand why he loved it so much um, I, I thought that was just a phenomenal thing. And everything I've read online, everybody's kind of like in agreement that it was pretty darn awesome. Um, the next big thing about CJI that, that is obviously very good is it's a huge payday. It's a huge payday for, for some athletes who are working hard. Um, and that is going to bring eyes to jiu-jitsu. It's going to bring more professional level athletes to jiu-jitsu if they have a chance to win a million dollars. Or at least you know, low level professional athletes, you're not going to steal away the, the uh, LeBron Jameses of the world, but you're, you're, you're going to get some of these guys who are coming out of colleges and, and maybe they're still in great shape, you know, did some wrestling and, and, and now they might have some more interest in jujitsu instead. Um, so that's, inter that's, that's an interesting thing. Um, I don't know that it'll do what Craig Jones is hoping for it to do, uh, which I, th I think his goal seems to be like, Hey, these athletes deserve to be paid by ADCC. They, you know, like I don't think you're going to see this huge influx of of highly paid athletes in jiu-jitsu. It's just not going to happen. But I think that if he has a tournament every year that's worth a million dollars, that tournament will slowly and over time become probably the most prestigious award, right? I was I was thinking about that a lot. Um, I mean, that's pretty much how it is in every sport, right? If you if a team wins the Super Bowl, they're gonna they're going to get a bunch of bonuses in their paycheck your team wins uh the world series that's that's worth a lot of money and and uh y you know pro boxing you win you win the world championship that's going to be worth some money right so it's it's uh I, I think that if he continues on the path he is it at the very least there will be a road for the potential to, for at least one big tournament that's worth a ton of money 
Um, I think more than likely you're going to end up with two tournaments, uh, and technically three. So two no-gi tournaments and one gi tournament uh, that, that all kind of have similar prestige. Um, and, and I think, you know, that being IBJJF Worlds, uh, you know, despite everybody disliking the IBJJF for many, many, many years. I mean, they've been talking bad about it since I started 20 years ago. Um, you know, it, it's it's still here. It's still every bit as prestigious. Um, and the same thing, you know, with ADCC. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, so, but I do think that this is just, there's room for, for more tournaments. And I hope that next year they just put it on a different date so that they're not overlapping each other. That That's really the big thing. And that'll allow some of these great athletes to, to get both awards, you know, create the accolades, give them, give them a, you know, pad their resumes and make it so that, you know, when, when they film their videos and, and go, go do seminars and stuff, they can, they can make some real money. Um, I, I think I'd be uh, remiss if we didn't talk about the, uh, Rotolo versus Tackett match. My God, that was a back and forth battle. It was such athleticism and, and impressive jujitsu on a lot of levels. Um, stuff that not every human being can learn to do. Uh, let's be honest. Like these are very, very, very skilled athletes. Um, but uh, it's still entertaining as hell to watch. Super fun, and it couldn't have happened without that that uh, alley that they they created. And then the other one that I want I want to uh, point out, and maybe this is just me, maybe it's just the boomer in me, but man, Nick Rodriguez really looked amazing. Um, and what I mean by that is I really liked that he wasn't celebrating. He wasn't going crazy until he won it all. And, uh, he really showed a side of himself there about what a martial artist is like, what it's like to do your job. Um, you know, we don't celebrate the, the small victories on, on the way, uh, you know, he's, he celebrated the, the major victory. You know, he, he you know, you have guys winning the first round and they're acting like they just won the whole thing. And it's like, man, you got, you still got a job to do. And these are some tough matches ahead of you. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, some upsets in there as well. Like that was, that was amazing to see in both, you know, this is the second, uh, Abu Dhabi in a row that I saw some major upsets. It, it was pretty crazy. Um, the, the, the last negative I'll talk about with Craig Jones invitational and, and let's be clear. I think that Craig realized it was a negative about 30 seconds into doing it. Um, and that was Craig Jones versus Gabby Garcia. Um, they spent the whole match or the whole time making this amazing event. We see all these super professional fights. Um, and then they come out with this inner, inner gender, uh, match that they've been hyping up. Um, and, you know, felt like it was going to be a work. And, and, and I, th I think that, uh, like you, you can see the look on Craig's face, like, like, like I said, 30 seconds into it, 40 seconds into it when he realized that she's not taking it as lighthearted as he is. And, you know, at, you know, he, he chooses not to even try to submit her in the first round. And then, you, you know, despite being in several positions where he easily could have, and then, uh, I think it really clicked for him when he was putting on heel hooks and realized she wasn't going to tap to them. Um, and you know, it's like, you can even see it going through his head. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to break this woman's leg. He's just not going to do that. Right. And, and, uh, I don't blame him. Uh, he, you know, so he, he takes her back and chokes her, but, um, you know, I, I, to, to his credit and the credit of the organization, they very quickly pointed out, oh, hey, look, this brought a lot of eyes to it. And, and you know, it was a great thing. Gabby actually got a great moment to shine. I saw a side of her I've never seen before. Uh, she was very empathetic and sympathetic. And and, and uh, it's good to see that from the athletes sometimes. You know, you don't, all you see is them coming out and, you know, someone like Gabby Garcia looks like a beast most of the time. And like, you got to see a very feminine, emotional side of her. And I thought that that was very sweet and endearing. Um, so it, it turned what I think could have been a very negative thing into, into, into a positive for Gabby. Um, so I think she ended up having a very good time with it, but, uh, you know, so in the end it's, it's not that negative. Um, and I don't think they'll do it again. I, I think they realized, Hey, this wasn't the best idea. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you threw some stuff at the wall. That one didn't quite stick the way you hoped it would, but, uh, it turned out okay. And, uh, you, you know, it's for, it's, we'll just leave it be. Right. But, uh, I think everybody agrees with that. Like it just didn't feel quite right. It didn't really match with everything else, you know, especially with, uh, 
uh, Hassan Orange going off in the background as, as Hanata or Ashna, you know, like that, it just didn't work out. But uh, I think everything else about the event was phenomenal. You, you know, kudos to Craig and everybody involved. Seth was involved in that. Uh, you guys did a phenomenal job. You should be very proud of yourselves. I'm glad that it's coming back next year. Hopefully it comes back for years to come. So um, I think that uh, when I first talked about it, I wasn't too sure about it. So, so um, you know, there's probably some things you could go back and be like, well, you said you didn't like this or didn't like that. And, you know, I'll eat some humble pie, guys. I, I was maybe wrong on it. You know, I thought I thought the event was good. I thought it was well done. And, uh, I, again, kudos to all those guys. Um, ADCC. And this is a... a People were saying, like, Flow Grappling has low production value. Now, look, it's not ESPN. But, like, here's the thing that I... Another negative on CJI is, like, it went to, like, 4 a.m. Eastern time. It would be nice if there could be more than one ring so that you could, you, you know, get that thing done a little quicker, um, or at least that first night. And, like, it just went on and on and on and that's just how it has to go because it's one big ring and and you know you're just filming it live in one string on youtube and like it's good that it was free for everybody to watch i think that's a good thing but at the same time it just took forever and uh there's no need for that like on flow you're able to go and, and look flow may not be the best one out there i'm not saying it is what i'm saying is the production there is really good compared to to cji because like I can go, I can decide what mat or what mat I want to watch. I can, I can, you know, there's three, four, uh, uh, three, I think there were three, three rounds. I can't remember three. I think there were three, three mats at any given time. And I could just click on the mat I want to watch and, and watch that. Um, you know, they're not perfect by any means, but I think the production's pretty damn good for a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament, guys. Remember, like we're the equivalent of like ESPN 8, the Ocho, right? Like, like. Nobody is watching us, uh, you know, other than like jujitsu people and the occasional UFC fan going, you know, in between UFC fights, just wondering what this is all about. So like nobody's really watching it too much. And for, for such a niche thing, I think, I think it, uh, the production was really good. The matches again were phenomenal, um, different rule sets between the two, um, I have I have thoughts on the rule sets. I think maybe I'll save that for another video. And because it, it's rule sets for everything. Like the whole, anytime you get a matchup like with with like a wrestle jitsu type person versus like a, a straight jujitsu type person, you end up in this this scenario where where one guy is like laying on his back trying to play guard while the other person is trying to run away from the guard or jump over the guard. And um, I think those are the most boring stupid matches to watch the only thing that's as boring is two wrestle jitsu guys who just look like they're bad wrestlers you know they just sit up there hand fighting for like 15 minutes and, and it, it's terrible fortunately you didn't get a lot of that one but you did we did we did end up with a few of the wrestle jitsu versus jujitsu type matches and uh man we we need some rules that that force engagement and and i think it's relatively easy to do so um i'll throw some thoughts into that another time um Gordon Ryan super fight. It was phenomenal. Um, the, the second one. The first one was a snore fest. I think everybody agrees. I don't think Gordon was happy with it. But that kind of goes back to what I was talking about with like wrestle jitsu versus like jujitsu. Uh, Gordon was, well, he, he's, he didn't do the wrestle jitsu thing, but he was just like doing his pressure passing thing. And, and Penna just laid there and it just was like ended up just, you know, two nothing snore fest that, uh, you know, Gordon was actually kind of lucky to get the score on it in, in the way it did. I'm not saying if, if he hadn't scored there, he doesn't get up and, you know, figure something else out. But, um, you know, that was just a really, really boring match, especially when you consider the semifinals were going on at that moment. And uh, Nikki Rudd was on the other mat submitting people. So, or, you know, in, in CJI at the same time as that. And uh, I don't know if Gordon just wasn't feeling 100% or if he just thought that he was going to walk through Penna. But, uh it was just another typical Gordon versus Penna match. And I think what we all need to realize is Gordon versus Penna is a freaking terrible matchup. It's not fun to watch and nobody wants to see it again. Um, so the the second Gordon fight, uh, Gordon versus Yuri, um, I liked that one a lot. It was very much one-sided. Gordon, Gordon, you know, kind of wrecked him. But I'll let's give Yuri some credit, man. He was in some bad spots and got out of every sub forced it to go, you know, to, 
to go to the points at least. Um, didn't get subbed, and that's a big deal. It's it's hard to roll Gordon Ryan and not get submitted. Um, so I thought Yuri did did as good as could be expected, and uh, you know credit to him. Um, all right, so the, the last thing I, I want to talk about is Gordon Ryan being typical Gordon Ryan stuff that people either love or hate. I, I'm not a fan when you when you just say, "Hey, man, if you're not with me, then fuck you." Like, and and he said that, and it's like. I don't think it has to be that way. I, I get how, like, he probably thinks it's like, you know, it's it's basically a middle finger to Craig and, and all those guys, and, and, and that's that's fine, I guess. But, like, I don't think that's for that stage. I think that's for, you know, leave that kind of crap on your Instagram. Leave that on the interviews in between. But, like, I feel like if we want those mats to be sacred, we can't be, we can't be talking like that on those mats, right? Like, if you want them to be what you say they are, you have to act in accordance when, when you're on that mat. And that's one thing Gordon could, could work on. I think, um, his personality has made ADCC more popular. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that, that people don't necessarily want that at all times. At least I know I don't, but anyway, man, uh, if you guys have a chance to watch any of it, watch it all. It, I mean, for me to pick out and if nothing else, go watch Rotolo versus Tackett. Just type it in to, to YouTube. It's going to be clipped everywhere. It's it's on the CJI uh, YouTube page. It's all free. Um, it, it's a phenomenal match. It's back and forth. It's exciting. Um, watch Nikki Rod. Um, you, you know, watch watch Mika Galvo in in uh, and uh, Kainan Duarte. Um, they in ADCC. They both did amazing jobs throughout. Um, so. Lots of lots of fun stuff to watch, and uh, you know that's that's kind of how I sum it up. I give I give both events uh, a solid uh, B plus. Um, some people will say that I'm being crazy or too hard on CJI, but look, it wasn't perfect. There's a lot to that that, that could be fixed with that, and uh, I think I think next year it's going to be even better. Um, a lot of people are just jumping on the band. I remember how that that's how people talked about EBI when it first started, like it was the best thing ever. No one's ever seen anything like it. And it's like, well, it's just new. Now people talk shit on EBI all the time. So that will happen. Um, it's new. It's exciting. Uh, you know, get past that uh, and look at look at the good. And then also say, you know what? Maybe, maybe this can be a little bit better. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.